This is part two of the video. Uh, having recently updated the firmware to 4.2.2, the uh, beta firmware that was recently re uh, released. Um, I want to go ahead and take a look at and show you guys some of the features, some of the changes that I've discovered so far. I've only had this firmware installed a, a couple days now, so it's still new to myself. But I have noticed several things that uh, have changed and uh, just want to share that with everybody. So the icon that used to launch and show you your apps is now moved down to the bottom center there. Uh, in previous versions in the upper right hand corner. So here's one new feature. You've got some widgets on your lock screen. So you can see here I've added, uh, I think it comes with one, I've added three more and you can just scroll through those widgets. Uh, and if you want to add another one you just click on the plus sign. Now widgets need to be, my understanding, they, they need to be designed to be displayed on the lock screen. So not all your widgets will show up here on your list. So I'm just going to click on this um, other clock widget to show how you add it. So that's the one I want. I click yes, save. And there it, there it is appearing on my lock screen. So again, you can scroll left and right. I'm not sure what the limit is on the number that you can add. And that's the one that comes with it. And these other ones are ones that I've added. So I've now added four widgets to my lock screen. Pretty nice. So what apps are currently running? Uh, now it's a horizontal uh, collection that you can scroll through and, and tap like I just did to, to go back to a particular application. So that's, that's a little different. Now we're going into settings. And from settings, we're going to go down to display. And one thing I thought had changed a bunch is the HDMI. It used to be a screen where you could select the HDMI resolution. Well, it's still there. I finally discovered it. Basically, you just have to tap on the word HDMI to bring up these settings. So from there, you can make your selection. So at first, I thought they had removed that, but it's still there. Just had to discover where they've moved it to. Okay, let's go back into settings. And now you can have multiple users. So you can see there you can actually click on to add a new user and each user has its own home screen and collection of apps. So I'm gonna go through the procedure. I've, I've clicked on add user and clicked on OK. And to my surprise the uh, tablet started to reboot so I guess this is normal I'm speeding through the uh, reboot process so you have to sit through that and now after it comes back up again this is with the new user now you see two little icons down at the bottom representing the two users that are now there so let's click on the new user that I just added And you can see now it has uh, that user has its own wallpaper. So I'm just going to dismiss this little uh, notification. And let's see what apps. So now, rather than a page full of apps, this new user starts with the uh, just uh, bare bones basics as if you just uh, did a firmware update. So now I've changed the wallpaper for this new user and I've added two, four, six, seven different apps. I plan on using this uh, for some kids so I'll just add some little games or whatever for the kids so they don't mess up my tablet setup. Now I'm back to the uh, owner or myself and back to my live wallpaper another new feature we're going to show you here is the uh, ability to, to dock certain uh, your, your favorite apps so you just long click and drag them down here to the bottom section below that line so this is where you want to add your, uh, your most commonly used frequently used apps so again long click and then drag 
and release down here on the bottom. And I'm not sure how many you can add, maybe eight. So definitely I will put my settings. And now as you see, as you scroll from screen to screen, your docked apps stay visible and accessible. So again, just another new feature with the 4.2.2. I like that quite a bit. Just uh, something that makes life. Another new feature is uh, something called Daydream. And here I'm showing you, it's in the settings display tab. And basically this is a, uh, if you got your tablet charging or docked is what they call it you can turn on this daydream mode and then uh, there's certain apps can be applied and here's a uh, the settings of when you want your tablet to daydream so let's go ahead and select and I'm gonna click on start just to kind of show you what uh, what it does so I've selected the flipboard application and when it goes into daydream mode it uh, it launches the flipboard so basically when your tablet is, is sitting there uh, plugged in uh, you can display ha have something going on with the display the built-in one is a, a one called colors I think and it just, it just cycles through a kaleidoscope of colors now another app that you can have that will uh, make use of Daydream is uh, Currents, and that's what you're looking at right here. So again, my tablet is just plugged in, and pretty much it would be asleep. But with Currents, I can see some uh, some headlines and some other stories while my tablet is just sitting there, and, and maybe I see something of interest. I can just go ahead and tap on it and uh, and open it up. So then, again, this is an, another new uh, feature with the 4.2.2. And current seems to be a pretty good one. There's another one you can uh, have, have it just go through uh, some bouncing pictures that you might have on your tablet. And have them bounce around the screen. So again, I haven't touched the tablet. It's just going through uh, uh, the current app. So my overall impressions of 4.2.2 beta is that uh, I'm, I'm happy with the upgrade. Uh, performance seems about in, on par with the previous version with one exception. That is, all the browsers seem to be just a little bit sluggish uh, compared to the previous firmware. And I'm not sure what's going on there. Uh, one of the pluses, uh, the Chrome browser does work where it didn't work in the previous version of the firmware. And then I, I came across a problem with the keyboard when... Uh, I was using a Chrome browser and I needed a keyboard input for something. It, the keyboard popped up as it normally does and then it just all got, got screwed up and I'll show you a, a picture of what that looks like. Um, and I thought it was a Chrome uh, browser issue but uh, the screwed up keyboard occurred with another browser and at least one other time with uh, some other input. I forget now where I was at the time. So hopefully this is something that gets addressed uh, before the final release. So. I can recommend it. You're not gonna, it's not going to be the big uh, performance increase that we saw with the previous firmware update, but it, it adds some nice features and uh, it might be worth your while. So try it out if you like. So here's a couple more pictures of the uh, screwed up keyboard that I mentioned. Uh, again, you can just dismiss the keyboard and bring it back and it seems to be okay after that. Uh, one thing I did forget to mention is that my Netflix app no longer works. It launches, it loads, it shows all the images, uh, but when you click on uh, a movie to play, it never plays. So m maybe someone else can comment if they've got Netflix app to work. All right, enjoy. <laughs>